In the last video, we were given a multivariable function and asked to find and classify all of its critical points. So critical points just means finding where the gradient is equal to zero. And we found four different points for that. I have them down here. They were zero, 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 negative two, square root of three and one, and negative square root of three and one. So then the next step is to classify those. And that requires the second partial derivative test. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, copy down the partial derivatives since we already computed those, copy, um, and then just kind of paste them down here where we can start to uh, use them for the second partial derivatives. So let me clean things up a little bit and we don't need, don't need this simplification of it. So we've got our partial derivatives now, since we know we want to apply the second partial derivative test, uh, we've got to first just compute all of the different second partial derivatives of our function. That's just kind of the first thing to do. So let's go ahead and do it. The second partial derivative of the function with respect to x twice in a row, we'll take this, the partial derivative with respect to x and then do it with respect to x again. So this first term looks like six times a variable times a constant. So it'll just be six times that constant and then the second term, uh, the derivative of negative six x is just negative six. Moving right along, when we do the second partial derivative with respect to y twice in a row, we take the partial derivative with respect to y and then do it again. So this x squared term looks like nothing, looks like a constant as far as y is concerned, so we ignore it. The derivative of negative three y squared is negative six times y, and then the derivative of negative six y is just negative six. And then we can't forget that last crucially important mixed partial derivative term, um, which is the partial derivative of f, where first we do it with respect to x, and then with respect to y. The order doesn't really matter in this case, since it's a perfectly ordinary polynomial function. Um, so we could do it either way, but I'm just gonna choose to take a look at this guy and differentiate it with respect to y. So the derivative of the first term with respect to y is six x, six x. And then that second term looks like a constant with respect to y. So that's all we have. So now what we're gonna do is plug in each of the critical points to the special second partial derivative test expression. And to remind you of what that is, that expression is, we take the second partial derivative with respect to x twice, and I'll just write it with a kind of shorter notation using subscripts. And we multiply that by the second partial derivative with respect to x, and then we subtract off subtract off the mixed partial derivative term squared. So let's go ahead and do that for each of our points. So when we do this at the point zero, 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 what we end up getting, plugging that into the partial derivative with respect to x twice, six times zero is zero, so there's just negative six. So that gives us negative six multiplied by, uh, when we plug it into this partial derivative with respect to y squared, again, that y goes to zero, so we're left with just negative six. And then we subtract off the mixed partial derivative term, which in this case is zero, because when we plug in x equals zero, we get zero. So we're subtracting off zero squared. And that entire thing equals negative six times negative six is 36, 36. And we'll get to analyzing what it means that that's positive in just a moment, but let's just kind of get all of them on the board so we can kind of start doing this with all of them. Uh, if we do this with zero and negative two, zero and negative two, then uh, once we plug in y equals negative two to this expression, this time I'll write it out, six times negative two minus six, so that's negative 12 minus six, we'll get negative 18, negative 18. Then when we plug it into the partial derivative of f with respect to y squared, um, again, I'll kind of write it out, we have negative six times y is equal to negative two minus six, so now we have negative six times negative two, so that's positive 12 minus six. So that will be a positive six that we plug in here. And then for the mixed partial derivative, again, x is equal to zero. So the mixed partial derivative is just gonna look like zero when we do this. So we're subtracting off zero squared and we get negative 18 times six. And uh, geez, what's 18 times six? So that's gonna be 36 times three. So that's the same as 90 plus 18. So I think that's 108, negative 108. And the specific sign, the specific magnitude won't matter. It's gonna be the sign that's important. And this is, this is definitely negative. So now kind of moving right along, these examples can take quite a while. Um, if we plug in square root of three, one, 
square root of 3, 1, what we get. Um, <clears throat> now instead of plugging in y equals negative 2, we're plugging in y equals 1, so that'll be 6 times 1 minus 6, so the whole thing is just 0. And then for the partial derivative with respect to y squared, instead of plugging in negative 2, now we're plugging in y equals 1, so we have negative 6 times 1 minus 6, so the whole thing is negative 12, so negative 12. And now for the mixed partial derivative term, which is 6x, x is equal to the square root of 3, so now we're subtracting off the square root of 3 squared, so what that equals is, this first part is just entirely 0, and we're subtracting off 3, so that's negative 3. And then we have square root of 3, uh, no, 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 we don't, that's what we just did. Now we have negative square root of 3, 1, and this will be very similar because this first term just had a y and we plugged in the y, so it's also going to be 0 for totally the same reasons. And same deal over here, the value of y didn't change, so that's also going to be negative 12. It doesn't really matter because we're multiplying it by a 0, right? And then over here, now we're plugging in negative square root of 3, and that's going to have the same square. So again, we're just subtracting off 3. So what does this second partial derivative test tell us? Once we express this term, if it's greater than 0, we have a max or a min. That's what the test tells us. And then if it's less than 0, if it's less than 0, we have a saddle point. So in this case, the only term that's greater than 0 is this first one, is this first one. And to analyze whether it's a maximum or a minimum, notice that the partial derivative with respect to x twice in a row or with respect to y twice in a row was negative, which indicates a sort of negative concavity, meaning this corresponds to a maximum. So this guy corresponds to a local maximum. Now all of the other three gave us negative numbers, so all of these other three give us saddle points. Saddle points. So the answer to the question, the original find and classify, you know, such and such points, um, is that we found four different critical points. Oh, let's see. Four different critical points. 0, 0, 0, negative 2, square root of 3, 1, and negative square root of 3, 1. And all of them are saddle points except for 0, 0, which is a local maximum. And all of that is something that we can tell without even looking at the graph of the function. And with that, I will see you next video.